it's time to start your life the way it is meant to be. There's only one time when it will be too late, and you don't want to wait for that. This is now or never. The choice is yours. Your host is Karen Wright. Today, you're about to meet some amazing people. The stories are not always happy ones, but they define a healing process. Listen with an open mind and an open heart. Now, here is Karen Wright. Welcome, listeners, and thank you for taking the time and choosing now to be with us. We have a wonderful, wonderful guest today, Bill Gerson. Did I say it right? Gertine? Gertine, like 13. Like 13. Gertine, like 13, is with us today, all the way from Chicago. Such an honor to have him with us today. How are you doing, Bill? I'm grateful to be here, Karen. I'm doing great. Oh, I'm so excited. You guys, our show today is about reinventing yourself as you embrace a new season. Have you ever felt nervous or overwhelmed by the idea of jumping into something unknown or moving into a season of growth or transition? You're not alone. Today, Bill and I will be talking together and finding out his need to reinvent himself in his 30s. Bill and I will also be talking about how he did that, how it turned out and what he learned about the shadow side of his success. Many of us also often have that. And so I'm excited to hear what he has to do about the changing of seasons. And sometimes it's a little bit darker than we really want it to be. So here we go, Bill. You know you know the routine. You told me you listened in on it. You know what's next I do. coming up. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh, listeners, as we get going, you know how I always like to just like whoosh, ground ourselves. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, just allowing that breath to come into our body and just being for just a minute. So take a deep breath in and releasing. Another deep breath in and release. Now bring your arms up and give yourself a big hug and repeating the affirmation that I love. I am worthy of my love. Repeat that three times. I am worthy. I'm worthy of my love. I am worthy of my love. I am worthy of my love. Take another deep breath in, giving yourself a big hug and releasing and then tapping three times in your chest repeating the word accept three times accept 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 and take another deep breath in allowing that air to go all the way down to your lower abdominals throughout your entire body and releasing Listeners, as you join us today, I hope that you feel the beauty around you, having gratitude in your heart as we and Bill talk together and talking about changes and talking about the unknown and jumping into things. Um, it's going to be an enlightening session, I can tell. And as we continue, you know, we always do the affirmations. And this week's affirmation, I told Bill, I never look at him before before the show and so today's affirmation is i am being i am being so Bill, what does that mean to you or what was your thoughts about that one you know, when you say i am being i i'm often thought of the i i have used the phrase i believe it was aristotle i think therefore i am and i think there's it's almost a derivative of that to be able to say I am being or be dash I N G means that you're not allowing time to escape, that you're allowing yourself to be in the moment that you're in right now without any judgment, without any hesitation or worry about what may be coming next. I am just being, and I really almost felt like I was being with your breathing in the very beginning of our segment. Uh, that really helps me to center myself 
in times where I may need to calm myself or, or to know more about who I need to be at that moment. I appreciate those words. Listeners, write the ap- affirmation down on your mirror or sticky note. I am being. And like Bill said, being the now, the breath work that we did at the beginning, that is to me such a, an easy tool to, that we have at our hands. We have right here every single day. And instead of those shallow breaths that sometimes we take, allow yourself to deep breath, deep, deep breath down into your lower abdominals and just holding it and then gradually letting it release. And you come into the being, you come into your now, your center. And as always, I love doing that with my listeners and especially with me and my guests. So we're together in alignment as we do the show because this is what it's about. It's about you and I, Bill, working together and making the show unique and authentic for our listeners and touching them and helping them along their path and their journey Um, because we're all on a journey. And sometimes those paths cross and just like you and I have crossed paths and we're here today, I just feel honored. And oh my gosh, I just noticed that you have my name back there. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed I do. For those who are listening and perhaps don't have the appeal of the visual, I have a, a screen behind me that has Karen's name on it saying, Bill Gertine welcomes Karen Wright. So yes, indeed, I, I did. I prepared that. for you. <laughs> I'm going to have to get something like that. See, I love those kind of ideas. I'm like, oh, that's good. Well, and this, listeners, this is not Bill's first rodeo. So let me do a little inter- <laughs> introduction to Bill so you get to kind of get an idea of who he is. So Bill is known as the 800 pound gorilla of sales performance. He's a 30 plus year sales expert, published author, sales trainer, keynote speaker, musician, um, MC, husband, father of three, grandfather of five, and foster of two very needy rescue dogs. Bill started his working career in a small market radio at the age of 16, and we're gonna dive deeper into that. He became the youngest licensed radio broadcaster in the state of Illinois. He spent 25 years in broadcast media in the Chicago suburbs, becoming a broadcast advertising sales rep, sales manager, general manager, and part owner of a station before starting his own sales training company in 2004. He wanted to work in sports, and so he became a trainer to the ticket sales departments of professional sports team. His first team was the Chicago Bulls in 2004, and he has since worked with over 100 individual teams in most every major sport in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. He started a virtual trainer company for sports and entertainment with several partners in 2017, and today serves as chief learning officer at that company. COVID-19 nearly put him out of business but he was able to reinvent himself and is and is still in the middle of that reinvention today. So there we have it. I love I love reading the bios and sometimes I don't read all of it, but I loved yours. Not like well, I didn't you. like the other bios, but I'm just saying this is a good opportunity for listeners to go, okay, here we go. Because we have a lot to talk about. I want to first start about our theme embracing the season. And um, (laughs) you've had to do that several times, it sounds like, over your career. Indeed, I have. So, 16, radio. How did that happen? I mean, I'm 55, radio. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this was my love. You know, when we grew up, our era was the radio era. There was no internet, there was no YouTube. We had what we knew, and that was some television, but really many people lived by radio, and it was kind of the thing to be in your hometown, especially in my hometown of Kankakee County, which is just about an hour south of Chicago. Uh, We had several small stations and I listened to all of them, and one in particular, uh, the only, the first FM station in our town. And so that was my goal, is to be on the air. And so I listened to late night radio. I had the wooden spoon in my bedroom, just like you see in the movies, practicing my patter and figuring out all the transitions between the songs and and finally got my chance at age 16. And so I went with a bunch of buddies up to the Dirksen Federal Building in Chicago. 
Uh, one of us just got our license. I don't remember which one, but we piled into his car and we all took the third class radio operator's license, which you needed to have to be on the air at that time. All of us passed. We all studied on the way up, of course, because we all had this giant book and you only had to learn like 30 pages of it. And so we all got it, but I was the only one to use it of the five that went up. And so I literally applied right away at my favorite FM radio station, WBYG, which was this pirate rock and roll station that played what it wanted to. And it was my, it was kind of the, the, the Nirvana kind of thing for me. I wanted to be there with that. So I was able to get a position on the air at age 16, uh, doing overnight shifts and eventually getting and, and having the opportunity at 18 to do morning drive, which is that six to 10 a.m. kind of the coveted time slot. Uh, and so that was where I figured I was destined to be. I was going to be the next. And for those who remember this name, Larry Lujak was the number one DJ at WLS in Chicago at the time. That was my destiny. That's what I wanted to be. Well, at age 21, I figured out where the money was and it was not on the air. Just for those who want to get into the business, it's not to be the on air guy. Uh, I found the sales department. And so that's where I stayed. And as you read in the bio, I, I spent a good long career, uh, 25 years or so, in the broadcast sales side of media and in, truly enjoyed creating ad campaigns for many of the customers that I served from a local standpoint and, and then serving some of the national clients we had in some of our smaller markets. Yeah, that's what I was going to talk to you about with the, with the side of sales. So it's all about advertising, bringing money into the station. Um, spots available for certain times of the day like how does that work how did that work well i would go out just like anyone would during the day and and talk to some of the clients in town which would be our you know local merchants those people who had small businesses whoever it happens to be whether it's a an auto dealer or a furniture store or wherever it happened to be that you might hear on the radio and we'd talk to them about their marketing plans and see if it made sense for us to work together to create some buzz and some traffic for them and so at the time, you know, radio at the time really was kind of the place to be. You were somebody of importance. You were kind of a king dog if you worked for the station. And I, there was a little bit of ego at work there for me to be a part of that whole thing. And so uh, not only would I go out and sell the, the airtime, often I would actually voice it myself as well, which was pretty unusual at the time to actually be the guy that sells it and then go in and actually make the commercial and then in some cases, in my earlier days in sales, I actually did a Sunday night jazz show on the radio station. So not only would I sell it, I'd produce it, and I'd play it on my own show. So the beauty of small market radio. I love that. But you have the, your voice is exquisite. Like, I love listening to you speak. I'm oh, like, thank oh, you. Oh, You're my kind. gosh. I can just hear it on the radio. Well, we are on the radio, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> You would be like that six o'clock wake up going, oh, yay, Bill's on. I love his voice. It's very soothing. <laughs> and here we go. Um, tell me about your music. Because you say you, jazz? So you That was my thing. I'm a player. I, I have been a piano player for a very long time. Took some, I, I know multiple instruments. I, I've just been very blessed to have some of that God-given gift that I've had to be able to do that and, and to try to multiply that with lessons and just learning. I've always had a thirst for understanding music and how it works. And, and so I have played for many, many years. My mother sat me down at the piano at age, or I guess it would have been six or seven, whatever first grade is. Uh, and had lessons for several years and then went on through high school and almost became a music major in college, but I just had the radio bug so much, it was just easier to drop the needle on the record than it was to learn the PS on the piano. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I continued to play and I play a lot by ear. And so, you know, if I were to ever be at a piano bar and anyone happened to see me there and there was a, 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 a piano just sitting there, we would probably own the place in about 10 minutes. I'm uh, pretty fortunate to know a lot of tunes. Well, see, and that's amazing. I love that. I lo love when people have that talent because I I don't. I tried piano and then probably three years ago, I decided I was going to take voice lessons and <laughs> sing. And that was hilarious because I made my kids come to every recital. I had a recital every three months. And so they would have to be there in the audience while I'm on, I'm on stage <laughs> with the mic singing and they're videotaping me. And every time they're like, you're getting better, mom. That was good. <laughs> well, they gave you the affirmation you needed to carry on and to do that. And 
I happen to think, and, and just if I may, I, I really love your voice. You have such a soothing effect. As I was listening to some of your work, I almost found myself, it was almost hypnotic in the sense that it's very calming and soothing. So you have an equally uh, distinctive voice as well. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yay. Thank so you. I'm not hypnotized right now. I'm still in, in my, in the, in the, we're not an out of body experience right now, but you, but I think sometimes what ends up happening is when you take lessons like that, it does improve your voice in many other ways. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because, um, throughout in my past life, you know, we all have different lives, right? We're going to talk about you going to your reinventing yep. your thirties, but in my past life, I didn't use my voice to speak my truth or to be able to express myself. And so I felt like uh, voice lessons would help with that. And so really that's why I took that next step into using my voice. I wanted people to hear me. Well, Peter that's Pat, such a, it didn't matter. But, what a but what a great story, because I think if those who are hearing this now are thinking, well, gosh, how do I step outside my comfort zone? How do I get to that next level? Because I'm afraid to do that. You really took one of those big steps, and that's to step in to do something that was really not frightening, but may have some fear involved. And you just gave it a shot. So I commend you for that. And I think it probably helped you in other aspects of your life. Yeah, I think so, too. I was always a dancer growing up, so I love the stage. You put music on, I can dance anyone under the table. I can dance on the table. I can do all that kind of stuff. But when it came to singing, I always was enthralled with those that could get up on stage and perform and just yeah. engage the whole audience. And I'm like, one day that's going to happen somehow. And here we go. There you are. <laughs> We're doing radio together. That's right. So we are going, um, I want to, wow, you reinvented yourself in your 30s what happened well then? what what happened Here, here's what happened okay in 2001 or 2002 somewhere around there this happened and for those who are not on tv right now or can see this video this is an ipod mm -hmm. and when i learned that apple was creating a device to put a thousand songs in your pocket i really felt as though that was going to be the death of local radio why would you need us if you could use one of these and just put the headphones on and just walk around? Mm -hmm. And so I began to look for something else that I could be relevant in because I had felt as though I really became very relevant in the career that I had. And so as I began looking, uh, I actually had the good fortune to ride in a limo for about two hours with a gentleman that some of you may know. His name is Mark Victor Hansen. He is a speaker, a very gifted author. He is the author of all the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Okay, yes. Some of us have two, some have 22 of those books, but you know which one I'm talking about. He's yes. one of the most prolific authors on the planet. He was coming to speak in my little town, and my job was to go up and get him and hold the little sign up and it says Hanson uh, at the airport and bring him into the limo and, and escort him down to my hometown. And there was a massive traffic jam out of O'Hare that day which was great for me because I got more time with him. Mm -hmm. And so he encouraged me to really look inside myself and, and come up with 101 written goals. Every one of his books has 101 stories. Uh, he claims that it is the spiritual number of completion. I have never found that anywhere else, but that's what he said at that time. So who am I to question 101? Sure. So I sat down. Uh, a few days after his visit, and it took me a good three or four hours and created my list of 101 written goals. And that was almost 20 years ago now. And I can tell you that some of those goals included becoming a published author, working in sports, meeting a few of my idols, that sort of thing. And, and I can tell you that it was the single biggest thing that changed the trajectory of my life because I now had a written document of what I wanted to accomplish. Something happens when you write something down. The brain causes you to then identify things that you would not necessarily identify had you not written them down. Because you'll talk to people all day long and you ask them, do they have goals? Oh, sure, I have goals. They're all right here in my brain. Mm -hmm. But they don't crystallize until something happens with this pen in your hand or somehow in the computer typing out the goals that you can actually see. Because what ends up happening, and it's happened to me, the brain will identify the manifestations of what you write down 
because you have written it down. It now, your brain is now open to recognizing those things. And I can tell you of those 101 goals, I'm at somewhere at 83 or 84 of them accomplished. And uh, I'm truly grateful to Mark for that tip and advice and, and have since passed that along to many of my training students that I've had throughout the years in my sports ticket sales work. Uh, but so many of those things now have come to pass. Uh, it, it's almost, it, it's incredible. It truly is. It really is. Listeners, we'll be right back. We're going to a quick break and stay tuned with Bill. We'll be right back with goals and writing them down. Stay tuned. if we lost them yep we're all clear back okay. in a couple minutes great is this hey. the break dance portion yeah <laughs> let's see like... if i can do this I, I actually had the music for this so there's you know we can actually do this um you can break dance you have not no well not not here but i mean oh, I, okay. I could in fact but uh <laughs> it actually is a um <laughs> For those Facebook livers. <laughs> this was kind of fun to put back. All right. These are parts of my uh, seven voices that I have ready for us if we choose to use it. Yeah. No, I think that would be really good. I love the whole thing. Uh, are, are, are we about on time right now and could the pace that you would like? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. No, we're doing good. Um, yeah, they flashed up the 30 second warning sign and then we continued to talk. So I think they were doing something on their end. So we, the breaks are fine if we go over because then they can adapt, but we just have to end on time. So if I cut you off, don't, don't be upset with me. I <laughs> totally get it. Remember, I'm the radio guy. I get it. My like, Bill, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's your window. We're at Closed. It. I love the whole fact about what you talk about with writing down your your goals because I believe in that. I understand that whole concept is that you write them down, you see them, and you know that's where you can manifest and your affirmations and things like that. I think are very important. So writing them yeah. down. So I appreciate you sharing that with our listeners. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, I I want to be sure and have them understand that that I'm as vulnerable as anybody else listening. And, and, you know, I may have been very fortunate in moving forward, and I'm not a creation that's done even close. Uh, but I'm struggling with some of the same things that they are. So I hope that comes across. Yeah. No, I think it's always a good reminder for people to write your goals down. There's a reason why. <laughs> the Indeed, mind there is. is. Yeah, the mind's connected to it. Yeah. yeah. No, I think you're right. And whether, like you said, typing it on the computer, printing it out so you see it, or writing it, your handwritten things like that. You would laugh if you saw my house or my mirrors because all my mirrors and my closets, I have affirmations written all over my house. People walk in, they're like, <laughs> what the heck, Karen? I'm like, I know. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Mark Victor Hansen believes he has the record. He has over 8,000 written goals all on post-its. He had an office in his, uh, a room in his office that had nothing but post-its, floor to ceiling, wall to wall. Uh, nothing. He had to move out of his office because he had so many posts. All right, guys, we're coming back. Okay, thank you. That's crazy. You are listening to Now or Never. The choice is yours. To connect with the program today, please call us at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, welcome back. We've been speaking with Bell, who's been amazing radio host throughout his young career. When he was 16, started being on the radio and then went into sales for 25 years into broadcast sales for the radio show. And then in the when he in his 30s, Oh, that terrible machine came out. What was it? What'd you call that? The iPod? It's the iPod. <laughs> Some of you still have one of these and it still works. And it still works. Yeah. And he was afraid his career might be over in radio. 
And so he took it on to the next level. And he, he before we went into break, we we're talking about when he, he met the Mark from 101 Soup and Souls. What do you call it? Sorry. Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul. Chicken Soup that for guy. the Soul. Yeah. And Mark recommended that he write down 101 of his goals, which, of course, Bill did. And we were talking during our break how important it is to write down your goals and whether you type them and print them out or write them down so you see them every day because you manifest, you put it out there. And then between you and the universe and everything that happens across your way, things happen and things unfold. People, yes, people could walk past you and could be the answer to a goal that you've written down. But if you hadn't written it down, your brain may not connect those two and may, you may not approach that person. So it's important. It is really important. And then during our break, you guys, we were jamming out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I had a few surprises. For I'm just saying for future for Facebook live livers, I'm like just saying we're gonna be like jamming out to some music because music's so good for your soul. Anyway, Gee. I love it. So tell me a little bit. You got into? Did you start your gorilla business first, or no? You went into sales for? I want to know about the sports sales side. Well, you know the 101 goals really started it all, and I needed the courage to break free from radio. I really thought I would die an old radio guy and because there are plenty of them. But I, I felt like there was something more that I hadn't done that I needed to discover at some point along the way. And so through a family friend, I interviewed for a brand new sales position that had come up at our local hospital. And it was an interesting, more of a market development sort of position where you went to visit the local uh, uh, physicians to let them know about all the places in which this hospital could refer patients to. So it became more of a, a, a business development side for the hospital. And nobody at the hospital had had any real sales experience or talent. And so I was kind of a, a, a interesting kind of a character. Everybody else was in healthcare and I was the sales guy. So I took the job, but I negotiated a four day work week when I took it. And I let them know that I am developing this one day a week kind of career of this speaker author thing that I didn't quite know what was going to be yet. And they said, well, okay, if you did four 10 hour days, we'd make that happen. And so that's what I ended up doing. And the hospital took a chance on me and I kind of took a chance on them. And so for that three and a half years that I had worked in the market development program, uh, I was able to take that one day a week and kind of build my boat in the basement and wrote my first book in 2007. I uh, wrote my, what was the and book? that one's called Reality Sells. I was actually write, written that with a very, very good friend, Andy Corbus, uh, who saw, as I did, that things were just being advertised that weren't true. And so we literally created what were called the four pillars of authenticity and uh, were able to find a publisher and actually work that out. And so that was pretty fun. And so I followed that up in 2009 with this book, The 800 Pound Gorilla of Sales. So I can say I'm a twice published author, which was one of the goals in the book. So the, the 101 that I'd had. Yeah. So it, uh, what I chose to do at that time was get going, try to get this boat built in the basement so that I could eventually break free from the regular nine to five. And so it, it took three and a half years, but I was able to work enough and build enough credibility within what I was attempting to do. And that was to become a sales trainer for the ticket sales departments of pro sports teams and had enough traction at that time to tell the hospital, well, I'm gonna go ahead and do this on my own. And they thought I was crazy. Oh, yeah. You're really going to leave this secure job at the best employer in the county. You're, you mean you have this great future ahead of you? Really? You really want to do this? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, well, it, it caused me to think a little more about do I really want to do this? But at that stage in my life, I was just turning 40. It was either now or never, that, just like your show. And so that's what I looked at. I said, this is, the, this is my chance. And it was the single best decision I have ever made. Not that my past lives were any less fulfilling, mm -hmm. but this really was a fulfillment of the destiny that I had for myself. <clears throat> so I gone up and did it. And so that's what I did. I cut the cord and I was this full-time sales trainer. See, and I love the fact that um, you made that choice. 
even though it's scary and you had everyone you know that you've been working with going what are you doing come on billy you're walking away you've got a good career here what are you doing here and a lot yeah. of times, a lot of times when people share this is something i've found um with other other people other guests on the show when they share their ideas of what they love or what they want to try i mean even with me i mean you know, this year I published a, a international bestseller book and it was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I've never written a day in my life, but I'm going to write this book and it's, it's going to be the best it can be. And people would look at me like, what are you doing? And so you, it's almost like you don't want to share your dreams with people because sometimes they're not supportive. And it's finding groups, you know, people that love you and support you and want you to succeed. And sometimes it's hard to find that group of people. Absolutely. It, it's, it's critical for all of us, Karen, to be able to find those people and conversely to make sure to limit your exposure to those people who would tell you you can't do things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and sometimes that makes for some very difficult conversations with lifelong friends even that hold you back from who you really want to become because they're feeding you the wrong sort of diet of whatever it is that what poison it is that they're feeding you to be able to keep you from what you could truly become yeah and i think that's very important listeners is take a look take a look at who you're surrounding yourself by you know they say if you want to soar with eagles surround yourself by eagles but if you want to be down with the chicken the pluck in the ground then you continue with the little chickens <laughs> and there's a whole lot more chickens than eagles there are so it, it's, it's, it takes courage to be an eagle. It takes a lot of courage to say, I can become that. Yeah. And it, it's just, it, and there's nothing wrong with being a chicken, okay? I'm not saying yeah. it's bad because, you know, it's, hey, everyone has purpose. But there, it, if you have that rare quality, and most of us do have the rare quality within you that can be developed and grown, then why not give that a try? You'll never know unless you give it a try unless you do and i think that that is so important that you you know what's the worst thing you fail but during the failure you've you've learned so much you know yeah. and you learn to pivot um that's right so, so you so bill you you get what you want you go after these teams become representative of all these chicago bulls oh my gosh like that's a powerhouse right there you know, worked really hard. That was the very first job that I was able to actually do. And, and for those who are watching, this is actually the first training class that I had done for the Bulls in 2004. I love that. Uh, looks like a fun bunch, doesn't it? Yeah. And really it was a really fun thing for me to do. Many of them who were in that class still have this picture. We talk often about their own careers because many of them have gone on to senior level positions in sports. And it was really the start. And this really began my career and the, the ability that I had to get to know many, many other organizations here. Uh, for those who are watching, this happens to be a group down in Mexico that I, I trained. This is the Mexican soccer group called Liga Mex, which is the premier division soccer group, just like the NFL would be perhaps here in the States. Okay. Liga Mex is in Mexico. And here I am with the Charlotte Hornets. And, and there are several other teams that I've worked with that have photos like this that I've been fortunate to work with over the years. And that's where my reputation was built. I spoke in many different conferences and I'm still well known to this day within the sports and entertainment industry as the 800 pound gorilla, the sports guy uh, that has done a lot of training for a lot of teams. And then of course, like everyone else, we had an incident in 2020. Um, and uh, you know, it, it's, it was a huge eye opener for me and for many, many others, because I was no longer the king dog. I really has, I, I felt like the typewriter repairman. Like I had a great skill, but nobody needed me. And so I had to, once again, figure out just like the iPod situation, what was I going to do next? Right. And I believe lots of people felt that when, when 20 hit um, COVID and everyone's like kind of stumped. Okay, we're, yeah. how do we reinvent the wheel? What do we do next? This has never happened to me. And it wasn't just, it was the whole world. It wasn't just a part of us. It was everybody and learning to pivot. And it, you did, you learned how to pivot. During uh, it, it took a while. The studio that you see today, that for those who are watching, 
uh, you'll see my area behind me was how I spent my summer vacation last year. I knew that things were going to be going to virtual. I knew that if I was going to be a trainer, if I was going to be any more of a public speaker, I needed to get good at this medium. And so I spent the time to learn how to do it. I gathered some tools that I knew I needed, some modern tools, some switchers, and a couple of cameras to be able to do it correctly. And so that's what I did. I, I understood where I needed to grow. And it was very difficult leaving behind some of the things that I've become known for. And that's been two day and three day live training. Uh, we started a company in 2017 with several partners of mine to be able to do this digitally. And so we have a virtual training company that has been uh, involved in training the ticket sales departments and service departments of those clubs that I'd served. But all of them were being laid off as well. And so not only was my virtual company going bad, the other side with my in-person training was also going bad as well. And so I had to learn what was next for me. And what I did after I'd gotten the studio together was looked back at some of the research that I had done in training people in person over the last nearly 20 years. And there appeared to be two different groups of people that looked identical as they started their careers. One would be exceptionally talented and would go on and create great things in sports or whatever they chose to do. And the other person who might have equal talents kind of wilted on the vine, did not do well, and somehow did not perform to the standards that the team needed. And so they parted ways very shortly after they started. And I began to look at what's the difference between those two? What makes someone fail and another to succeed that seemingly have identical skill sets? And so I, in the research that I did, seven of these buckets kept coming up, seven different things that caused others to be able to fall short of what they wanted to achieve in their lives. And I, I called them the seven voices. Mm -hmm. And so the seven voices in your head was the keynote speech that came from that research. And I began doing this on the stage, but then I actually had to pivot it to the virtual stage. And so now I have this keynote experience where I reveal all seven of these voices and practical tips that people can use to be able to overcome those voices to achieve whatever success they need and deserve in life. So I, that is very powerful. We've got just a couple of minutes before we go into break. So I don't know if you want to say what those seven voices are and then when we come back from break, we can dive a little bit deeper. Well, I think that's a perfect tease to have people come back after our two minute break. <laughs> I love teasing people. This is the best part. <laughs> now I'm happy to reveal those. And, and I think once we come back, I, I'd be glad to share those with the group. Okay. I would love you to reveal those before we go into break. That would be great. All right. Before okay. the break here. All right. Well, the first is comparison. Uh, the actual being able to see one person versus another. We do this all the time and on the road in a, a Zoom call. We're always comparing people and that's the first thing. And it, this is a very big one for most people. The second is regret. Regret is something that we think, oh my gosh, this the woulda, coulda, shouldas in our lives that we have that. In fact, the number one regret amongst most people is education. Believe it or not, I should have gone back to school. I should have finished school. I should have gotten my degree or whatever that happens to be. The third one has become most prevalent here in our society post COVID and that's inadequacy. The voice of imposter syndrome, the belief that perhaps you are not as smart as other people around you think you are and being found out about that. The fourth is genetics, uh, actually thinking that you've been born this way and you will never achieve any more than what your genes will allow you to do. Uh, the fifth, very simply, is failure. Those things that talk in your back of your mind, knowing that you did not succeed at this and don't wish to try again because of the pain that was involved in that. The sixth one is guilt. Uh, being able to say this cycle of guilt, you cannot break the cycle, whether you do one thing or another, most people are stuck in neutral and that guilt begins to nag at them and becomes a very, very difficult thing throughout their lives unless they take action. And then the seventh is probably the most difficult one to get through as I talk about it, and it's heartbreak. It's the loss of a loved one or the loss of a job or someone near to you uh, and the, the effects that can take place of that if you don't honor that pain and what needs to happen in order for someone to move forward. And so those are the seven voices that we have. I love that you shared prior to break. So 
Listeners, we just went through the seven voices, so we have comparison, regret, inadequacy, genetic, failure, guilt, and heartbreak. And when we, when we come back, Mr. Bell is going to share with us, go a little bit deeper on some of these, because I'm intrigued. And if you have questions, you know where to call. Call our 800 line, which is 888-346-9141, if you have questions. And when, when we come back, Bill is also going to share with us how you can get a hold of him. And so Bill's going to have his contact information ready for that. And we will be right back after this commercial. Okay, good segment. We're all clear. Back in a couple minutes. Okay, thank you. Clear. Awesome. They didn't give me my 30 second warning, and I'm like, okay, are we in? <laughs> They're like, last <laughs> How long is this one? This is this another is, two minutes? Uh huh. Like a two minute break. Okay. Roughly. And then, yeah, and then we, then we close after this one. So when we Excellent. come back, um, I would love you to share how people can get a hold of you. Yeah. Um, where they can buy your book. Um, we'll dive about the seven voices. And will we have time to talk a little bit about your book too? 800 Sure, if you'd like, absolutely. Okay. Okay, because I bet. think I, I want to go into that a little bit more so too, because that looks intriguing to me. I don't know if you saw my introduction to you this week. I'm like, introduced you and I'm like, and he's, you know, the, what are you? The writer the, or the inventor? You started your company at 800 Oh, the Pound movement, Gorilla. the Seven Voices movement and the 800 Pound Gorilla, yes. Of sales, yeah. And I said, it's not an elephant in the room. We got a gorilla in the room. <laughs> I totally missed that. I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to share it oh, with you. Oh, <laughs> shoot. That would be great. It's on my yeah, platform, this, um, place. So those are the ways in which do we, so we're, if so, do we want to unpack a few of these? Is that what you'd like to do? Yeah, I would. Okay, I, we can um, do that. I think guilt is a huge one. Mm -hmm. um, heartbreak, just because I've gone through so much, I want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> yes, I would be happy to do that for you. Okay, if we talk about those two, dive deep a little bit about those two, and then um, is there one that you love too? Not that well, the, 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 that some of the voices about. are kind of fun at the very beginning when I have the comparison, but we can do whatever it is you'd like with the the time that we have. It, it, either one of those is just fine. Okay. All right, we are coming back, stand by. Okay, thanks. Probably should start with um, the comparison. Just You are listening to Now or to Never. The choice is yours. To connect with the program today, please call us at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is karen at shinenowornever.com. Let's get back to this week's show. Here again is Karen Wright. Listeners, welcome back. We've been um, speaking with Bill Gertin. Did I say it right? Gertin. Gertin like 13. Gertin like 13. <laughs> and we have been doing, uh, just diving deep with so much with his life and what he's done. Um, I want to remind all my listeners that they can go to my website, um, shinenowornever.com, and click on my retreat site that's coming up October 7th through the 10th in Park City, Utah. It's called Now or Never, Diamonds Ignite. And the retreat is going to be one that will help you um, acknowledge and become aware and release labels, expectations, things that have been put upon you and finding the gem, the diamond within you. I have a couple experts that will be with me. So I'm really excited. If you have questions, call me, um, email me, and I will help you get signed up. So Bill, we're back. And before we left, we were talking about the seven voices. Um, and the first one, we went through all seven of them. They were comparison, regret, inadequacy, um, genetics, failure, guilt, and heartbreak. And let's start with, because I want to go through some of these, but I want to dive deeper just for into your other book too, The 800 Pound Gorilla. Yep. Um, so comparison. And I love it. Yeah. You showed a picture about the apple and the orange. And comparison to me is a big reason why it's hard for me to get on Facebook or Instagram. 
because I start seeing what everyone else is doing and then I feel like a smug. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly we, we don't want you to feel like a schmuck. And right? as I do the presentation, I actually have each, I have voices that actually help me uh, to, to share the seven voices with folks. And so let's dive a little bit into the comparison side. Wow, they have such a nice car. That is such a great outfit. I'm so jealous. Look at what they're eating, and they're so skinny. How does that happen? You know the voice. I am the voice of comparison. We do it all the time. We're in the car next to somebody, and we're looking at the backyards of our neighbors next to us, we're looking at Zoom screens next to each other. Uh, interesting, science has now called this, they, they actually have a name for it. It's called the terrible two. <laughs> No, 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 not T-W-O, but T-O-O. -O. The voice of comparison often sounds something like this. I'm, I'm too, too slow. slow. Too uneducated. uneducated. Too short. Too indecisive. Too, too average. Too picky. Too impatient. Too quiet. Too clumsy. Too critical. Too smart for my own good. Everyone Everybody else gets, gets more likes than me. I wish I still had a full head of hair like him. I'm still single and she's getting married again. Science now says that almost 10% of our thoughts every day are comparison thoughts. And you, know, you just mentioned it earlier, you know where most of this comparison is happening? The bathroom mirror? No, no, she just said it, social media. media. It's where it happens, where you look at somebody's picture on Facebook that you know them and you know who they are and you see the picture and, and that's not their life. It's more like fake book. Now, wait a minute. What about all those salespeople you train? Don't they have to compare themselves to some standard of performance? Well, sure, but that's the job that they have on a regular basis. This is something that I see in a lot of the places that I go. This is called the hustle board. This is where all the people in the sales department are listed on the left side and all of their results, all their successes are listed on the right. Now, if you're really competitive, this is something you really wanna see yourself on, but not everybody has that bone in their bodies. I mean, how many people are getting conniption fits just even thinking about having their name up on the hustle board? But that's the sort of thing we want to try to avoid. I call these the brain invaders. And the things that we try to do to avoid that. And so Karen, without a lot of further ado then, let's talk about the three things that I suggest that you might be able to do to help along in those lines. The first thing is to choose mini milestones, things that you can do very quickly and feel like you're making progress along the way. If you're a runner, a distance runner at all, I am not a distance runner. My distance is from my house to the mailbox. But for everybody else, you don't start running a marathon by starting with 26 miles. You get there gradually. You might work out. If you want to start a workout routine, don't start a two hour workout routine. Start with 10 minutes at a time. So you want to get there gradually. So the second thing is to be a secret seeker. Look for those things that others might have now and that they figured out already that you may not have figured out that might be able to help you along. Kind of like these folks, those people who know the Fixer Upper people, Chip and Joanna Gaines. They've made Waco, Texas, almost the tourist destination, number one on the map. And so that what they've done is they've shown people the secrets of taking ordinary stuff and making it extraordinary. Now, you may not have that bone in your body right now to be able to do that, but you'll want to know some of the secrets that they have before you get started on anything on your own so that you don't make those same mistakes and you feel like you have the knowledge that you need. And then number three we have is to get real. What is it you can really compare yourself to that's realistic and you're not putting yourself too low or up against something that might be just impossible to reach? My wife has this big crush on Brian Urlacher of the Bears, okay? Now, it's no secret, she's got posters up in our man cave, it's a woman cave as well, and I mean, she's not made any bones about this. Thank goodness, Brian Urlacher got hair because indeed, he had a much more better look to her when he was bald than he does now. So Mrs. Urlacher likes this look a whole lot better than Mrs. Gertine does, so that's good for both of us. But I've recognized what I can do because I'm not ever gonna be this but I know that my wife has a sense of smell that's very sensitive, and so I pick colognes that, she, that appeal to her in that same way. So I can't compare myself to Brian Urlacher, but I can sure smell better than him, and that's what I wanna be able to do. So if you wanna be the next master chef, you don't start from scratch, you wanna build up to that. Instead of being the next master chef, why not say something like, I'm gonna cook the best meal my family has ever had? Or you might say, I'm gonna cook the first meal my family has ever had. 
just something that you can measure. And so those are the three things that we talk about Comparing becoming yourself getting involved realistically. I like that. Yeah, well, thank, I'm glad you do. So these are the three things that we might be involved with. Choose many milestones, be a secret seeker, look for those things that others know, and then to get real. Don't compare yourself to something that's unrealistic or just unattainable. All Helpful? Three, yes, all three very important things. And I look at that with comparison, and I always think baby steps, right? Just take baby steps and look back at what you've done the last six months or the last year. And I guarantee you, you're not in the same spot you were six months ago. You've made something, some kind of improvement. And so give kudos to yourself for that. Gold star, here we go. We picked <laughs> more than one meal for our kids and they're finally excited and happy for us. But I yeah. really appreciate that. And tell, let's tell the listeners a little bit about your book, The Eight sure. Pound Gorilla of Sales Performance. Yeah, it, it's when I wrote it, I wanted to be able to show people that sales was not a mystical thing that there were, and I interviewed several people along the way that would give me kind of the, the what it is that it took for them to become a dominant player. Because that's the definition of an 800 pound gorilla. It was a term in the 50s that was used by the media to describe companies that were so big and dominant that no one could compete with them. At the time, it would be companies like GM or IBM or several others that were just so huge that there was no way anybody could enter the market around them. What I started my company in doing is helping others to become the dominant player in whatever they chose to do, whether it be a restaurant or a sports team or whatever that happens to be. And so what I set out to do is to find out what the 12 pillars of being a dominant player in the marketplace would be. And so that's what the book happens to be all about. And it's available right here. I just happen to have it right next to me. So I love it. So where can people um, find your book? Because you have two books. Mm -hmm. Yep, Reality Sells and the 800 Pound Gorilla of Sales are both available on Amazon. I don't sell them any other places. Uh, it makes it very simple for me, but uh, you're welcome to look at that. Uh, there's only two titles with my name under there, so G-U-E-R-T-I-N. Uh, and I, I'm grateful for the support. And I'm, I have had several people write back to me afterwards saying how it changed them or how they looked at themselves differently as a result of both of those books. So I'm happy to get the feedback from any of your listeners that happen to pick up the book. Yes, I would love listeners always go to Amazon and pull those books, read those books, do a review, reach out to Bill. How can they reach, how can my listeners find you, Bill? Well, they can find me at bill at the 800 pound gorilla.com. They can link in with me on LinkedIn or connect, sorry. Uh, and you're welcome to look at some of the examples and some of the things that I do relative to the seven voices in your head at this website, uh, www.the7voices, the number seven, T-H-E-7voices.com. And I have been grateful to be able to perform this now to six different countries around the world. And it is becoming more and more of a movement each and every day. And I'm grateful to those people who have found value in this and have chosen to put me on as a keynote or a breakout session that they may have virtually or in person. Yeah, I would recommend all the listeners to go to that, um, the sevenvoices.com and check it out because I'm sure it will be an eye opener and some things you might realize, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing that. So it's not gonna be so scary. And um, we've got just a couple minutes before we close and I yep. Bill, would love you to, listeners, you might be nervous about jumping into the unknown. And I would love Bill to share how you found in your experience that might be helpful for the listeners. So if they're scared about trying something new, what is a word of advice or something you could tell them to help them just take that leap? I'd be glad to share three things that have helped me. Okay. One is that I've listened to others selectively, that I chose to listen to others that I knew knew what, was the, what the, the story was. I didn't listen to others that may not have the background or the experience or have done the kinds of things that I wanted to do. I seeked out advice from those who had been there before that could understand the longing that I had to move forward. And so I would say, be selective in who you listen to in moving forward. Second is to follow your heart. Be okay with doing something that seems crazy to others. Because if somebody seems that it's not gonna work or it's crazy, it actually has potential for traction. Because it, sometimes the load, road less traveled is the one that gets the most traction and now has the opportunity to succeed. 
And then the third thing is that have a great support system. I have been so blessed to have my wife, Sherry, uh, to be able to be right there behind me for 34 years. Uh, my parents were wonderful in allowing me the freedom to be able to be myself and, and start up and, and do what I needed to do. And so those parents and, and those spouses that are out there, please give your spouses and children the freedom to be who they are. I love that word freedom. That is so important. <laughs> That's a, one of my power words is freedom. And um, as a parent, my thought is we teach our kids to fly. We don't want them, and we want them to fly and follow their dreams and not sometimes I remember when they were younger, I always was, okay, when they grow up, they're going to do this and this and this, because those were my dreams. And mm -hmm. I came to terms pretty quick listeners that even though they might be my dreams they're not my, my kids dreams. And so listeners, as we come to a close today, I want you to listen in, listen to this podcast again, it's going to be, you know, in 20 minutes, you can go back and listen to this. But the words that um, Bill has shared with us, the value that they have, and the seven voices in your head, could you relate to any of those? The comparison, the regret, the, the failure, the guilt. Go to his website, check it out. And as always, remember our affirmation. I am being. You're, you're, this week, take time, take a deep breath, breathe. And remember, I am being. Be in the moment. Be where you're at. And realize and have gratitude how grateful you are no matter what's going on in this world we do have choices once again thank you for choosing to being with us today on the show now or never the choice is yours remember this world is not for sissies we are here to experience our own story as we each walk our personal journey the breath is a gift of life choose now and live have an amazing day and thank you for choosing to be here now. Until next week, sending you all love and light. Okay, awesome job, big good show. All clear. Okay, thanks, Matt. All clear. Thanks. Woohoo! Right, How do we do? Day. That was great. Billy you did amazing. Well, th I didn't mean to take so long on the first voice because um, it took me. No, I thought know, that it, was great. It, it, okay, good. I didn't mean to not put in any of the others, the guilt and the heartbreak and whatever at the end, but. Um, you can see that the way that I've incorporated all these voices in this, it makes it a little more challenging just to take one snippet and just exactly. Do it. No, I totally understood why you did that, and I love that you did it and shared for our Facebook friends. They can see it, and you know it's good advertising with your your website right there. And I always invite and you know I want people to reach out to my guests because you all are so powerful in what you're doing and can help so many people. And it just is always an honor to have, well, to have you on my, my show today, my past guest. I learn every time. I'm always over here taking notes, right? Isn't it interesting? You put this thing out and then you become the benefactor of this PhD of knowledge yeah. that takes place when you just sit back and do your part and let your guests do theirs. Uh, you're, you're doing a great service. It, it, all this learning that you're doing, everything you're doing, you, Karen, are doing a great service for humanity. And I really appreciate you taking the time to do it right, like you are. Well, I appreciate that very much. And yeah, it's, you know, grat radical gratitude. <laughs> it's like yes. giving back to others and just trying to help, you know, spread the love and light, the knowledge. Um, you know, Airways is, to me, the fastest way to do it, where it gets over the entire world with all the podcasts and everything that's out there for us now. And we have the amazing. tools. Yeah. So great. Well, yeah. whatever I can do to help in the future, Karen, please let me know. Congratulations on your success of the book and the podcast and uh, love to help in whatever way I can. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, you have a wonderful day and we'll talk soon. All right. See you okay. then. Thanks, Bill.